Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here from Saturday Night Stitch and today's post is a browse through of February 2020 issue. Okay, so we're just going to dive straight into it. I really like the use of royal blue. This is a beautiful blue color that has been selected by Pantene as the color of the year for 2020, I believe. So I think that that's a really nice play uh, by Berda. In terms of the cover of this Berda German issue, they've gone with the couture style a 1950s dress, which I think is quite cool. And they're also celebrating 70 years of publication, which is pretty awesome. Okay, and then we start off with some ads. And there's a really nice little section here which goes over the history of the magazine, sort of telling you where it started and um, how Anne Berda was uh, the one that took over a nearly defunct uh, magazine publishing house and how it was also the first magazine, the first Western magazine to be sold in Russia during the time of the Cold War. And then there's also here details showing you um, how the covers have looked differently over the years as well as the different names. So back in the 1950s, it was Berda Modern, and then it became Berda Mode and Magazine at some point in the 80s. And then Berda Style, or Berda as we like to know it. So that's pretty cool, I think, you know, sort of hearkening back to the ages of Berda. Okay, right off the start, we've got the vintage style, 1950s couture level gown. From what I could see of the um, instructions, this is high level. I think that this is possibly one of the most sophisticated patterns I've seen in a Berta style. Just check out that line drawing. You've got this, um, I want to say it's like a sash thing that is sort of tucked underneath something else that is creating this full skirt here and this was taken from the 1957 version uh, the 1957 issue of Berta Modern which is really really cool and I think that if you ever wanted to challenge yourself you know in terms of what you could achieve in the art in the craft of sewing tailoring or dressmaking then this would make your list and it looks fabulous in the colors that they've chosen for it. Absolutely fabulous. Okay, and then we've got another masterpiece uh, pattern. Berta isn't playing in the February issue. They're starting off with a four-dot pattern, and immediately after that, another four-dot pattern, which is this classic style blazer. It's an oversized boyfriend-style blazer, and you could have a lot of fun with it using lighter weight fabrics like they've used kind of like a viscose linen which confers the look and feel of linen but without the wrinkling quality of linen so viscose linen is a good fabric if you do like linen but you don't like the wrinkling of linen and i love the um lining fabric that they've used they've used a bright um paisley print lining Okay, and then we've got skirt number 107, which is available in sizes 34 to 42. And it's a simple pencil line skirt, quite high-waisted from what I can tell. And it's got these gigantic patch pockets as a feature. It's nice. I'm interested in making it because it's a classic silhouette and it's got those practical pockets. But what I love most about this is the inspiration I got from this blouse. I cannot tell you how much I absolutely adore the print mixing that they've done here so you've got your tiger print fabric on one side and then you've got your classic um chains and belts um fabric on the other side and if you look even on the collar the collar has been split in half it's animal print on the one side and it's the other fabric on the other side so i have pinned this as something that i definitely want to make even though the pattern isn't available in the magazine it's just a matter of finding a top pattern and just doing the weird contrasting fabric that's right up my alley and then we've got uh, trousers, which are in sizes 36 to 44. Simple trousers with a drawstring and inseam pockets. There isn't much that you can add to that. It's a good classic style. And then we've got a biker jacket. And it's got a zipper. It's it's all right. It's As far as biker jackets go, if you look at the line drawing, it actually is quite a simpler uh, one. So there is one that I remember from, I think it was Berta 20... 2016 and they've got a biker jacket in there and it's actually a little bit more complex so i think that this is the sort of biker jacket that if you are new to sewing and you want to make one this one would be achievable it doesn't have any pockets though 
um, which is a big no-no for me. And then we're over to skirt to dress number 113, which I believe is called a pinafore dress, but I think that this could classify as a wrap dress because when I looked through the instruction, this does seem like it is a wrap dress. Now, key point that I love about this particular style, those gigantic slanted pockets. I love, love those. And just for that reason alone, spoiler alert, I plan on making this. Um, love the style. You can easily wear this in winter with a roll neck or you can even layer it with a shirt and they do show you that they do that in um, the subsequent pictures. And then the other thing that we have is trousers number 106. And this is an interesting style of trousers. It's sort of like baggy. It calls back the 80s style of really baggy trousers. But it's also got these interesting seam details whereby you can really make a feature of that by using contrasting fabric if you wish or just using a contrasting thread like they have used here. And I think that's pretty cute. I also like the little styling element where they've used a silk scarf as the belt. Love that. And then we've got this uh, polarizing shirt. Um, and this is the tall size pattern, by the way. It's 72 to 88. And somebody um, on the preview called it a mullet shirt. And I can't think of a more apt term for it. It is a mullet shirt because it is so short at the front. And then it's quite long at the bottom. And it has polarized views as far as I can tell so far. Some people are just like, this is utter rubbish. But some people are like, that looks interesting. I got to say, I am one of the latter. I actually really like this style and I would like to make it and see how it goes on me. And then we've got jacket number 101, which is a peplum jacket. Now, personally, I think that you can never go wrong with a peplum. There is just something about um, the style that goes in at the waist and then it has this dramatic flair that comes out and I love peplums. There was one point where I was just sewing peplum after peplum after peplum. <laughs> so naturally I was attracted to this place. It's called the Dior Darts and I love Dior Darts um, in a garment. So this is definitely up there uh, for me. So I was just like, yeah, this is quite nice. And then we've got the petite size pattern. It's a dress in size 17 to 24 and it it's a very mod, I think, in terms of I get a 60s vibe from it because it's got this high waist, the empire, almost empire line waist, but it's also got the straight silhouette. And then it's got this interesting feature with an exposed zipper and a round pull. So I think this could be really nice in the right sort of fabric if you wanted to create a 60s style look. And we've got dress number 112, which... I can't, I'm struggling to really see the details on this dress because of the fabulous fabric that they use. And I do like this uh, 60s style psychedelic -y fabric, which is a stretch gabardine. It's very unusual to find a stretch gabardine in such a beautiful, bright print. Normally I find them in solid colors, but it's a simple dress with bust duds and a round neckline. And then it's just got this pleat. I, I can't tell. I can see that there's something going on on the waist, but it's hard to see with the bold print that they have gone for. It kind of looks like there's a bit of a, a, a ring going there. I don't know. I don't know. But... Yeah, I'm not too inspired. I like the fabric, but I don't think there's much to the dress itself. And this is the featured sewing lesson, which is the skirt. And this takes you through step by step. And this is always a great pattern to go to for if you're new to sewing with Berda. And then we've got some ads. So a key distinguishing feature of the German issue is that it does have a lot of ads in it, just like a fashion magazine. And they also have a feature um, on Diane Keaton, the actress, and they're doing um, an editorial shoot uh, emulating her style. And if you're not familiar with Diane Keaton, she she really dresses in a, a sort of like a pseudo masculine way, but with a feminine touch to it. Um, so I quite quite interesting so here we go first of all this wrap top or wrap looking top and i love this it's got raglan sleeves it's got some gathering at the front which is 
always uber nice and very flattering i think and it's got these gently fluted sleeves at the elbow which is pretty awesome i like fluted sleeves but i don't like them at my actual wrist because when i actually use my hands they do get into stuff so i think i love that i don't have to make that adjustment so this is really high up there for me and then we've got that jacket again but this time it's in just classic white which is beautiful and stunning to look at i look at that and i have aspirations but then i remember that i've got five kids and there is no way white would survive on me for long but one day when i'm older and my kids have flown the nest this is the sort of thing that i'll be sewing up for myself and then we've got those trousers again this time in a black and white polka dot and it's a viscous fabric it doesn't have the drawstring and it's all right it creates like a wide leg pajama style look if that's the sort of thing you're into moving quickly on we've got another blouse a simple blouse with a bust duds and an embellished neckline with a tie detail okay nothing new there and you've got um I like to call these uh, ornamental sleeves because they're not very, very practical. They do look lovely, but the fact that you have to tie them by yourself makes them very impractical. I'm not sure that you'd be able to create cute little bows without like um, a handmaiden to help you get dressed. But they look pretty. So hence they're ornamental. Okay, top number one, 110 that mullet shirt again, but with an even longer mullet at the back as if that were possible now to me this looks a little bit penguiny with the black and white and then you've got sort of like this um tail but i still like it and i really like how they've um realized this vision by using this i think it's called a dobby print fabric or something like that but i think that this is really really cute and if i if i'm gonna make this which i probably am I would go for the longer one rather than what the one that's um, the shorter one. Um, but yeah, I really, really like this. I think that this is quite cute. And I love that it's got the extra long cuffs and it's got four buttons there. Um, yeah. And also loving the styling on here. I mean, she is just so happy. She is so happy. And that makes me feel happy when I'm flipping through the magazine. So awesome. We've got that pinafore dress again, number 113. And the more I see it, the more I like it. And this time it's been layered over a white shirt and they've used a check fabric. And oh, good points for pattern matching across those pockets. Even the pocket flaps, the slanted pocket flaps, they've attempted to pattern match. That is some high level sewing there and much appreciated. So I really like that. I actually like that and I would wear that. And then we've got that dress again. And this time, instead of that psychedelic, bright, bold 60s print, it is in this very simple, very pod back box check. And it's quite interesting. I can see this becoming popular, especially with this uh, fabric uh, style, because you can easily lengthen this or not. And just that box pleat at the front, it gives it enough of uh, an enhancement detail to make it more appealing. And then we've got a tutorial on how to make this funky cravat plastron thing here, which I think is pretty awesome. I know I always say this, that I would like to try some of their crafts and stuff, but this is something that I definitely would try. Imagine this in a hot pink, like I would love to wear this in a hot pink. Um, so yeah, so I thought that this is the first time I've seen something that I've been like, oh my days, I must actually make it. And then we move on to a chic and a sporty photo shoot, which has got all these bright spring-like colors, which is great because it's preparing you for spring if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, as we are. <laughs> um, so we've got that wrap top again but this time it's in a stripe and it looks really quite nice i think in a stripe and i think if i were to make it i would definitely try and go for a stripe with it and then we've got that jacket 101 again but this time it's very very classy in a twill a pale green twill and you can see a bit more detail with the belt here this would look so incredibly chic if you managed to make it with 
a self a fabric belt but again like i said what is not to love about peplums that dramatic flare that you just get oh it's lovely and in here she's just wearing it with a denim skirt but it just elevates the outfit to just another level of mm, for me so really like that and we've got those trousers again but this time they've been made in a drapier satin fabric I gotta say, I prefer it in the linen viscose rather than in um, the satin fabric. And that's because I don't think satin does really well with the flat felt seam that's clearly been used on those panels. I mean, it just looks a little bit scrunched and I kind of feel like satin would really wrinkle in an unpleasant way. But in terms of styling, this is so spot on because you've got this... Um, I like the textures that they have used in this picture. The top, it's like a fuzzy top that is layered over a shirt that's got these mini um, polka dots. And then you have a belt which has used a, a Linton tweed style fabric. And then you've got the smooth texture of the satin. And I like the balance that that creates. One of the things I'm trying to do more of this year in 2020 is to work with more textures and to create outfits that have more textures. So I love that. And this is an inspiration picture for me. And then we've got a sweatshirt. Berta like to do sweatshirts. And this one, the only difference is we've got some shearing elastic to just create a little bit of a trumpet sleeve over here. It's not exciting. I still prefer the sweatshirt from January 2020, personally speaking. And then we've got another skirt. It's the high-waisted skirt. Again, you can tell that this is quite high-waisted, but we've added a, um, a, a flounce at the bottom. And that's quite nice. I quite like the use of the Linton tweed fabric, but it doesn't have any pockets, so it does reduce its practicality, in my opinion. The super easy pattern that Berda have thrown out for beginners or people that are new to Berda is this top, which we have seen every month. Berda will do something like this top, which is a, a loose fitting top with drop shoulders and it will have a V-neck. And then the variation will be how you finish the sleeves or it might have slits on the hem or it might have a curved hemline. It's a super easy pattern and it's good for those people that are new to sewing with Berda. And then we've got a sweatshirt number 118, which I have to admit on the previews, I didn't realize was a sweatshirt, a full length one. I actually thought it was a cropped um, <laughs> sweatshirt. And I remember thinking, hmm, that is interesting, but it actually turns out that it isn't. It's just that they've um, got sort of like a baggy, voluminous lower bit on top of this contrasting panel. I think this could be interesting with the younger crowd possibly, but... I think if I'm going to do a sweatshirt, I'm just going to do a sweatshirt with a stripe over there and not add the extra hustle of doing the panel. But it's it's all right. And then they've got a feature on Boucle um, and what it means. And they've just got like a couple of tips of how to sew it. And I was very happy to see um, Linton Tweed was featured there. So Linton Tweed is sort of like based um, in the north of England. So that was quite, quite nice. But we have that biker jacket again, and it has been elevated to another level of chic with using boucle fabric and i think that this is wonderful this is the sort of project that i would really love to do first of all it's working with a really challenging fabric because i have seen uh, linton tweed panels before and they are so loosely woven they scare me and i wouldn't even know how to begin to sew with that but I imagine that by the time I finish making this, I would have learned so much, but this is lovely. And the styling is absolutely on point with this. And how nice is it to marry something as edgy as a biker jacket style with something as traditional as the Chanel tweed style fabric. I think that's pretty awesome, personally. Okay, there is your sewing lesson not using that very simple, very simple, non-fitting, uh, loose-fitting um, blouse where you can let your fabric sing. And then we've got some more ads. And we've got some more ads for hand cream. Now, the must-have pattern piece is the trench uh, top and it looks nice. I have to say, I like these rounded collars over here and the way that it's got like this rounded. I think it gives it more of a casual look and feel and it's only got a gun flap on the one side. Plus it's got a raglan sleeve. 
which is pretty awesome in terms of giving you the flexibility of wearing more layers underneath it. However, however, these dangly things are very impractical. I think these are what I would call ornamentals, but practically these would just get into everything and you'd just be constantly be like, oh, sorry, oh, I was reaching over for my drink and sorry, my tie got into your drink. So, you know, fantastic, but let's rethink those straps over here. And they've got some fabric suggestions. How amazing does it look in the yellow? Love that in the yellow. And then we've got the kids section. And I thought that they did a great job with the kids section here. And they're covering um, heights 116 to 140, which I think is sort of from about um, seven or eight years old to around about 12 or 13, which is pretty cool because I've got kids in that age range as well. So we have a simple sweatshirt, number 129. It's oversized. It's the sort of thing that kids would love and would pick up and wear all the time. And then we also have a simple t-shirt that is a little bit over long in the back. So I guess you could call it a mullet t-shirt. <laughs> and we've got some simple um, trousers, sweater trousers with ribbing for the waist. I would make everything so far that we've seen here. And then we've got a simple night dress, which although they're presenting it as a night dress, this is perfectly usable as a girl's dress. It's raglan sleeves, which are always easy to sew up. And I find that uh, raglan sleeves, the kids grow in they stay in a raglan sleeve uh, top or dress much much longer um than with a set in uh, sleeve and that's because raglan sleeves give you more movement space and then there's an ad there for the birthday easy uh, magazine and you know what the next stage after sewing your clothes you need to know how to look after your clothes so i thought that this was a really good tie-in you know because garment care is a big part of sewing your own clothes and then we've got a crafty thing about how to make this lovely popping little pencil bag for your kids and then we move on um to this trousers this culottes which I don't know, culottes, I think you can either hate, you, you either love them or you don't. And there's just something about the play on stripes with this that didn't work necessarily for me. I think if it had just gone straight down, I probably would have been okay with it, but I just didn't, I didn't bond with where these stripes um, have gone. But culottes are always a good thing to have, especially in summer and oh. That photo shoot has me wanting summer so badly. And then we've got a simple shirt here made in a PK fabric. Um, and, you know, yeah. I can't say that this is very exciting. But this jacket, jacket number 122, this is a pretty nice jacket. It sort of reminds me of Green Line Studios' Morris Blazer. And I, I think that this could be a popular one i really do and it's been made in jersey and jersey jackets are so incredibly comfortable and i think that the styling is on point i love that little polka dot uh, neckerchief with the stripe and then you've got your statement t and you've just got these simple capris just it, it looks really awesome so i thought that this was a good one um, and then we've got a shirt dress with an elasticated waist over here and they've played with the stripes this time I'm happy with how they played with the stripes because we're creating a lovely chevron detail and you know it's just a lovely cool chilled out look and those earrings are banging on this so I thought that this was quite nice as well and then we've got a simple top with a raglan sleeve and some tucked detail on the raglan sleeve to give it a bit more volume reminds me of the 80s can't say i'm a big big fan but this could be popular and we've got a top a tunic top which has got i don't know what it is with these tie sleeves they seem to be very popular i must be you know I need to go check Vogue or Harper's Bazaar to see if it's like kind of like a thing. But yeah, a little bit impractical, but pretty fabric. Love the fabric. And then we've got this top again, but this time it's in a lighter weight jersey. Mm, interesting use of grommets there. I hope they're called grommets. But I got to say, I'm not going to be playing in sand whilst I'm wearing those fancy shoes. Like I, I really wouldn't go into a a sand pit in fancy shoes but that's just me you know and then we've got some more ads here for um hemp products which apparently it's like a 
wonder ingredient. And then we've got a tutorial on how to sew your lining into a jacket, which is pretty cool. And this is what we have as well. <laughs> A tutorial on how to make a pink cushion that's actually the slice of a cake so you love cake you love sewing why not put your interests together with a cake shaped pink cushion how cool is that okay so we're done with uh, the browse through definitely a great showing uh, for Berda. i think that they definitely has some very strong styles in there so Right off the bat, for me, I really like Pinafore dress number 113. I like those dramatic slanted pockets. I want to make that. I also want to make trousers number 106 in a linen. They look like they would be really comfortable trousers and perfect for those summer holidays when we're walking around the Italian Lake District. I like the mullet shirt 110. I don't know how this is going to look on me, but I will have fun sewing that up because it does have those interesting seam lines and details. So those are the three that immediately jumped up at me as I must make those. Also really liked the wrap uh, top because it's got the gathering on the the raglan sleeve there, which just adds a little bit of interest. And I also like the fluted sleeves that are elbow length very feminine and i think that this would i i think that this is going to be the very popular one in this issue absolutely so i really quite liked that one as well i really liked this because i love peplums you give me a peplum you make me a happy person and i like this in terms of the inspiration that it has given me whereby you are marrying something that is edgy and modern and contemporary with a fabric that is traditional and you know sort of slightly old-fashioned but you bring it together and the fusion creates something that is unique and quite eye-catching so i really really do like that um so and all of the kids patterns i would sew those absolutely for my kids so i think that this was a solid issue and i am happy with it i don't know which one i'm going to make first it's unlikely that i'll have time to make all of these three items because february um is the shortest month of the year but i will definitely try and make those i really hope that you've enjoyed this browse through and why don't you let me know which ones you like from this issue are you going to be making anything from here if you are do let me know in the comments box down below if you haven't already please do subscribe. I put out sewing related content twice a week. And until I see you next time, happy sewing. Bye.